All right, so we're back. You don't want to know how much time I lost trying to figure this all out. I'm not going to lie, it took ugh, just around an hour to get everything sorted. Um, but as it turns out, configuring and working with this Jet um, JetWed um, platform is, it's not bad. Okay, so where do we leave off? Um, we ran our install and we were trying to get to the point where we could see a report that had been um, published. And what I'm going to just do real quick is I'm just going to make a really quick, easy report. Uh, then I'll rows, uh, we'll make a list of vendor numbers. And then um, right next to it, I'm going to do NL first from the vendor table to show the vendor name. What I do wrong? NL first. Uh, I don't know how to filter. Okay. And when I run this report, um, we can see it works. And we will, of course, have auto plus high plus values. I'm going to go ahead and push the publish button. Um, previously, I wrote, uh, just for testing, I created a report called book one. Um, but I'm going to make a new report. I'll call it my vendor report. And I'll click the publish button. And this is kind of where the magic happens. When you push the publish button, theoretically, this report is being published to your web portal, which now, theoretically, all your users have access to. Now, you're wondering, what did I just spend an hour on? I spent an hour trying to figure out how do I get to the dang portal. I will give you a pro tip. Um, when in doubt, go to the um, tech support page and take a look at the knowledge base articles. Um, They're actually pretty good. And if you search for Jet Web Portal, let's see what comes up. I actually don't know this time. Um, yes, there's an article on publishing to the web portal. There's a long, uh, well, an extensive pre-installation checklist, which we obviously skipped as part of my installation process, which might be the root of some of my issues. Um, but there you have it. Okay, so to access the web portal, assuming you did the installation the way I did, what you have to figure out is you have to figure out, okay, what is the web address to get to the portal? Um, what you can do is you open up IIS, so Internet Information Services Manager, and when you click on this guy, you'll see that you've got, in addition to any other websites you may have previously had, I had none, um, you'll have the web portal and the mobile service. Right now we're just interested in the Jet Web Portal. Now there's nothing useful over here. By default, if you click this um, Browse button, nothing happens. What you have to do is you have to go here under Bindings, um, and you define how do you get to this web page. Now, when you click on Edit Binding for HTTPS, by default, um, you will have all unassigned selected. And what you'll do is, um, if you don't have a certificate and all that set up, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, you probably don't have a certificate. Um, and if you do know what I'm talking about, then there's obviously KV articles that will walk you through this on the Jet Reports website. Um, but what you'll do here is you'll put in your IP address. Now, if you're like me, you don't know what your IP address is, so you'll open up command prompt. Does anybody other than me remember DOS, good old DOS? You'll type in IP config, and here you're looking for IPv4 address, and this 192.168.1.180, that's your IP address. Note, it's not the default gateway. So for my notes, just in case you want this later, um, we're looking at setting up, where are we? The Jet Web Portal. We will use IIS to configure bindings. You need your IP address. And from CMD, command prompt, you type IP config. And it's something to the effect of 192.168.1.x, in my case, 180. Now, your IP address will be obviously completely different. 
um, or maybe it's the exact same, who knows. In any event, you'll put that IP address here um, under IP address. And then for SSL certificate, um, the SSL certificate, what that's all about is it gives people outside of your domain, so outside of your local area network, it gives people the ability to access your website, which makes sense if I'm trying to run jet reports from my mobile device, um, from my cell phone, or from a laptop in the middle of Starbucks. Um, given that we don't have, um, I don't have a proper SSL certificate, I'm just going to go with the whatever was in this drop down, IS Express Development Certificate. I'll click OK, I'll click Close, and then you have to restart the web portal, this button here. Great. Um, with that done, we can now go and try to find our way over to the portal. So I'm going to bring up a web page here. So what we'll do is we'll do https colon slash 192.168.1.180. Okay. Um, again, because I don't have a good certificate, I get this warning saying that my connection isn't private, but that's okay. I'm going to move forward anyway, and it brings me to the JetWeb portal. Now, if you're doing this for the first time, it won't automatically log you in. It will ask you to log in. Now, if you're doing this from your work computer, you probably have a domain. If you're doing this from your personal laptop, like I am, um, if you go and right-click the Start menu and look at System, remember this guy, it should tell you what your computer name is right here. But for most of you, you will just use your domain, whatever your business, your company domain is. All right. So what have we done so far? Let me go back to my notes. Um, well, we've got the web portal, and it's doing its thing. Um, you can see here I've got two reports, a vendor report and a and just book two, the one I was kind of testing around with. I can see who the owner is, when it was last published. And curiously, I can see that this vendor report, which I just published from Excel, has never been run. Um, I can click on it and I can click run. And if you can imagine, somewhere behind the scenes in the world this jet report is running, but it's not running on my computer. I'm not, well, I'm not running it through Excel, I'm running the report through my browser, which happens to be Chrome. I can also click on open and I will be able to see, again, in Chrome, ooh, this is intriguing. So here it asks, the, uh, let this app access your info. Usually we just click through this. But what I'm seeing here is this Jet Reports will be able to open and edit files in the app slash Jet Reports folder. I might need a little clarification on this, but if I'm reading this properly, what's happening is, is my report that I developed on my computer is going to go to jetreports.com to their online storage. Intriguing, it's asking me about OneDrive, which is, whose OneDrive is it? Is it theirs or mine? Interesting. I'm logged in as me, so is this report hosted in my OneDrive? Well, let's find out. Let me see if I can find a new folder on my computer. I'm going to do this on my other monitor. Ha, okay, I see what happened. 
All right. So I do have OneDrive, uh, the per personal edition, not the, well, I have both. I have both the Office 365 as well as OneDrive personal. Um, in my OneDrive personal, I now have a folder called apps slash jet reports, and that is where my file is being stored. So it is still stored on, you know, my computer. Um, but here is the result of the jet report that I can, you know, presumably, ooh, can I edit it? Let's see what happens when I edit in Excel. Um, we'll launch the application. And interesting. So when I open this iteration of the report, notice here I'm in design mode, and this is just a static spreadsheet, right? There's no JET functions anymore. This is not a JET report. This is just the static text. So this is the equivalent of taking a report, running it through the scheduler, and exporting it as a values-only workbook intriguing. And again, all that was done by, through the web portal, clicking on open the report. I'm going to write that down because I think that's actually really important for you to consider in your workflow. This might be an alternative to using the JET scheduler. So again, from the web portal, if you open a workbook, and literally you have to click the open button, it um, transfers to OneDrive personal, and I'm, in, I'm, I'm wondering had, if it's possible to also have it go to your OneDrive business, but anyway, it transfers the spreadsheet to OneDrive personal, and then if you open it up, In Excel, it is a values only workbook as if run through the scheduler. That's some pretty powerful stuff. Because for those of you who've worked with the scheduler, you know what a challenge it can be to get all of the decom permissions and all that configured and sorted to just have it do it for us. That's pretty powerful. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close Excel. So let's close down Excel. And I'm wondering if I can open the report as a JET report. So this time, instead of clicking the Open button, we're going to click on the Edit button. Now it downloads a copy of the spreadsheet. I'm going to click Enable Editing, and Verdict says, yes, it is in fact a JET report. I have an NL rows function here. I can manipulate it. I can change it as a designer. And where is its default save location? Currently, it's living in, it's going to be living in my downloads folder. So in order to, once I make changes to it, what don't I know how to spell? No. Having issues with the function wizard. Okay, so I just added a new function to my vendor report. I'm going to save it. And can I publish it? Oh, you can only publish in design mode. Interesting. I'll overwrite the existing report. Interesting that you can only publish in design mode. Huh. Okay, do I want to save changes? Sure, it doesn't matter. Um, when I pop over to the portal now, last time it was published was, ooh, let me refresh my page.
just a moment ago. And whoop, let's run this report. And again, if I open it, it's going to open in OneDrive. And you can see the new column is there. Now I'm wondering, uh, show me OneDrive. Here's OneDrive. Refresh OneDrive, updated 731. Yeah. Okay, so that's the portal in a nutshell. And if I look at sharing, huh, I could control who has access to the individual reports. I can look at when the report was run. So a lot of a lot of features that we saw in the scheduler, the ability to, apparently to create a log file. I have to find out more about that. Oh, and you can see the version history. Can you restore? Ooh, you can restore. That's fantastic. So if I make a report and somebody else opens it up and, and breaks it, I can restore back to a previous version. Um, and that's, again, just taking advantage of OneDrive functionality. That's, that's pretty brilliant, actually. Okay, I wonder what we get in admin view. I'll click on enable admin view. And a lot of things look pretty similar. I can change the owner of a report. And I guess that changes who the owner is in um, OneDrive. Fascinating. Great, okay. I'm going to stop <laughs> just clicking around. Um, so that's the, the portal. I can see there being some real value for that for end users, uh, for organizations that are even trying to manage all of the JET reports that you have within your company. So instead of just having it sitting willy-nilly in folders on people's desktops or folders in different people's computers, by having it managed in OneDrive, um, you have all sorts of advantages like the um, version control, changing the ownership, being able to control who you share the files with, um, and then obviously being able to run the reports through the web, through the web, or kick off the running of the report through the web instead of having to do it um, directly on your computer. Pretty powerful. Um, the, the big caveat, though, is that you have to do this setup of IIS if you're going to have people access it that are not physically on that computer. And again, that speaks to working through getting your certificate, uh, your certificate set up. Um, but that's something that your, um, your, your NAV provider or your IT provider who helps you set up um, your web certificate for, say, Dynamics NAV or GP, um, if it's in the cloud, it's something they can help you with. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to pause the video and then we're going to tackle Jet Mobile.